Okay, so here we are coming back. Uh, we can see that LNAV is just capturing. The line is intercepting here. And then our vertical track is above us, and so is the glide slope. So the, the blue is going to be your, uh, your FA or your uh, NAV radios. Uh, the uh, magenta is going to be your uh, FMS track. So at an airport like Chicago, where the approach is you're cleared 30 miles out, it's a great feature to have the magenta track. Let's go ahead and get uh, the nose lights on since we went through the approach and we forgot sterile, so let's let the flight attendants know that uh, we made a small mistake in there and we can sit down quickly. Now the Embraer uh, really slows down pretty quickly, so I'm going to keep it going fast just to shorten up the video a little bit. Uh, now that we're intercepted on here, we're going to arm uh, in just a moment actually once this uh, this green line comes back in, or blue line comes back in a little bit, we'll intercept the localizer course. Um, this is pretty common in the aircraft. Sometimes the localizer course and the nav course don't quite line up. So I'll arm the approach mode, and you can see by just hitting approach, it's within the uh, region of being able to capture the localizer, and it's going to do that on its own. And now we're altitude, glide slope, and arm. This means we don't have to flip between source selectors. Um, we don't have to tell it, hey, I want to go nav now, I want to go FMS now. Um, it's just, it's done. Um, and that's a, just a lot, it's an awesome feature in the aircraft. It makes life super easy. Like I said, you could manually tune it if you wanted to. Some pilots like to do that, some don't. So here we are getting a little close to the airport. We're about 12 miles out from the runway. I'm going to go ahead and start reducing to about uh, 210 to, to 180. Um, now in the real aircraft, the autothrottles can take a while to slow down. See moving slow there, so I'm gonna turn off the auto throttles Throttle. and just idle Throttle. myself. That'll give us a much quicker uh, idle as we're coming up on the runway a lot faster than I realized. Uh, I don't want to show you guys an unstable approach if I'm in a tutorial video. So our glide slope's coming in, getting ready to capture. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the gear because I'm, I'm not so confident that I've managed the speed right. There's nothing that says you can't drop the gear with flaps up. I usually do, do it around flaps too, but we're gonna do it flaps up because we're fast. You gotta do what you gotta do to meet your stabilized approach criteria. Now below 230, we go flaps one. Uh, I didn't point out green dot, but I will on the next one. We're gonna start slowing down. There's your green dot down by the speed bug. So that's your, uh, your LD max uh, if you want to get super technical. The aircraft uh, will fly better above that green dot, and we don't need to go below it. Uh, in icing conditions, that green dot will increase, and that's just a great safety net for us. We'll go flaps 2, and we're going to hold 170 here. We can effortlessly hold 170 knots in flaps 3 to a 5 mile final, and we do that regularly. Really, you can hold a 180 to 190 to a 5 mile final. Um, once the gear comes down, it really does do a nice job of slowing down. And here comes flaps 3. You will notice a slight balloon in the nose pushing itself over in flaps 3. Um, that's a completely real world thing in the aircraft. It does balloon pretty heavily. I'm going to turn the auto throttles back on. And uh, we got 4,000 feet set for our mist. And we're going to keep this going here uh, as we come on down into the runway. And let the airplane fly it. Now, for different um, different types of approaches, you would do different things with green needles. Um, so that means we're going to use FPA. And um, we're going to use the uh, LNAV because we cannot actually track a... Uh, sorry, a localizer, we would use the approach and uh, green needles for FPA. Oh, I've confused myself now. We can't actually track a VOR using uh, this aircraft. If you put a VOR frequency in there, there's no way to track it other than uh, putting an LF course in there, so that's something to bear in mind. Now we'll start to reduce our speed towards our V approach. Again, I, as a rule of thumb, do not bug a speed less than green dot. Uh, it is a limitation on our aircraft to not fly below it, and to protect myself, I won't request a speed from the aircraft below that. So there's flaps 5. Speed goes to V approach. We run our landing check. Uh, so flight attendants notified. The ICAS is checked. We're looking for go around an ATTCS. That's the automatic thrust control system for takeoff. Uh, that goes into some go around logic for wind shear. There's a lot of logic in that, um, but we, it needs to be up there. Uh, flight attendants notified. ICAS checked. Landing gear is down. Three green flaps are five. Landing check is complete. The aircraft is slowing down. Uh, it's trying to catch itself here. Uh, this is something the sim does a little bit more than the aircraft does. Um, the, the auto thrust will keep the speed up a little bit higher. You'll need to pay attention to that uh, if you're flying the aircraft in the sim. 
Now we're coming down uh, quite nicely on the glide slope. There's a thousand feet the aircraft is configured. Uh, I didn't set barrel mints, uh, but uh, just to give you the sound, we'll select a barrel min of like 1100 feet if I can get there before we get there. I'll tell you what, I'll just go over our our and that'll give you something. Um, 170s in the real world at our company do not have auto land. Uh, they will reduce the thrust lever for you, but we do not have an auto land feature on the aircraft. You'll notice it comes in quite nose high. It does that in the real aircraft. 5 degrees nose up, not uncommon. Um, it settles into ground effect very, very nicely. Autopilot. So that's going to be me on the autopilot, autopilot, taking that off. New and improved GPWS sounds minimum. from the real aircraft. Uh, Awesome addition to the aircraft. I've read a lot of people complain about Minimums. the minimums. So there's our mins. Getting just a little low on the glide slope. We'll just pull up ever so slightly. We've got the runway made, so... 50. 30 feet. 40, we'll start to the 30, rest of the descent. 20. 10. And you can see it just settle in the ground effect pretty nice. So there's Rottle. touchdown. Rottle. The rest levers go to uh, the reverse. We'll hold the nose off for a second for a nice smooth nose. Auto brakes are uh, slowing the aircraft down. There's 60 knots, reverse comes out. And uh, you can see in the sim, it, even auto brakes medium at a relatively uh, high approach speed, it uh, performed very, very nicely on its uh, distance. We could have had that thing stopped very quick. A little bit of rudder to take it off the uh, runway. Above 40 knots, you've got some limiters put in there for your tiller, so we don't really use the tiller above 40. Uh, there's really no need for it. Now, if you're a real-world pilot and you're watching this, you're going to see me go uh, straight ahead up here and not take the standard taxi route. Uh, I, I just, I can't, uh, can't be bothered with all that now, so you guys are going to be okay. Alright, uh, coming off the runway, we're going to retract our flaps, set our trim to 4 degrees, nose up. That's a standard thing. I don't know what other companies do, but that's what we do. And uh, back to FMS and FMS speeds as a courtesy to the next crew. Clean up some of these lights. Keep that on, I guess those strobe lights off. So there you have it. That's the approach in landing. The last phase we'll go through is the shutdown, a little bit of the AP logic. So stick by for that.